I hope. How are you? Did you get emotional last night? I didn't. I just had uh, a cup of tea and a packet of quavers. And I just sat there with a grin on my face. Because we've made it to the playoffs. Just have a quick look at final standings. It's been a long old season with a lot of changes. But it is how it finished up. So there we go. Fourth place secured. 85 points. Bloody hell, it's took a lot this year, hasn't it? Wigan, edging title away from Rotherham. 92 points. Rotherham in second, back up. MK runs Wednesday, Sunderland. And Wickham sneaked that last spot. Said it was going to be disappointing for somebody. It's uh, poor old Plymouth who've been up there all season. Uh, terrible running. They had really tough running. But Wednesday's done it. Last game of the season. Made sure we got that fourth spot. 85 points. And so we'll, uh, we'll face Sunderland. I think it's Friday. Thursday, Friday. Whew! What a season. A good win that, weren't it? Said it would be. Never really in doubt that we could beat them. We got too much for any team at home. And uh, they were that early worry though, weren't they? They were that early worry. But everybody kept going, kept lifted, kept team going. And then ended with a convincing performance. Just have a quick look at the side how we lined up. Peacock, Farrell in net. Back three, Story, Hutchinson and Palmer, no complaints there. Midfield, Hunt and Johnson in wide areas. And then the triumvirate of power in the middle, Byers, Luongo and Bannon. And up front, better Hino and Gregory. A forward line that I think most teams in division would like to have had on the books. Pack Tillsbury, absolutely rammed. Great atmosphere, loads of people in there. Bottom at Lepping's Lane, full of home fans. It's great to see that, actually. I think it should happen more often, but that's a different uh, a different case. A uh, bit daft about that strip down edge at North Stand. I'll never really understand that. But, I mean, there's a bloody wall there. I don't know. I, can't, I can only presume it's about egress. But anyway, Ram Dillsbury, great atmosphere. And it becomes a big occasion, doesn't it? And Dad and Mo said before the game, we've got to make sure the lads focus on the job in the hand and don't get caught up in the occasion and I thought the first 10 minutes I thought we did actually get caught up in the occasion we couldn't really get going bit sloppy sloppy first touches and of course we're only a few minutes in the inevitable George Hurst I and mean, it had to be really didn't it at cop end always going to happen and and really it wouldn't be Wednesday if we'd had not had some sort of setback would it if it, if it were all plain sailing it wouldn't have been Wednesday seen Palmer and Hutchinson get a bit of a tells in uh, after the game um, but I'll be honest with you I think it's actually intelligent from him from Hurst because he's making a run and then he just stops making his run defender Big occasion like that, you get grown to ball. And some, the most basic thing in football, when you're in a big game, even if it's in a schoolyard against Class 2B, who you absolutely hate, big game, somebody gets through near your goal, it's your natural instinct, you put your send between ball and goal. And I think it's just a case that that's happened. So, not too harsh there. And it's intelligent play for lad. He's back around, he just stops, stops his run. And it reminds me of something. I did a coaching thing, it was about 20... Oh Christ, probably 25 years ago actually. Uh, and one of the things they were showing is it, 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 they were showing us this drill and it was about movement and it was for, it was for young uns, you know. Run around and make space. No balls involved. Just run around and, and find a space and this is over. How much, you know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this coach assassin or whatever they want to call him, he steps in, he says, you've made a mistake here. Yeah? I said, oh, what's up? He went, that kid there is not moving. But you know what young kids are like, do a one kid like that. Catching flies. He said, what it, What coaching's about is you've got to step in and tell people where they're going wrong. I said, yeah, but he's got more space than anybody else on pitch. You know, they were in this little square. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, everyone else is charging about. I said, he just stood there in acres of space. He went, no, but it's about running into space. I said, well, he's not having to run, he's just stood there, everyone's running away from him. Because the drill is fine space, everyone's running away from him. To find their own space, he's, he's wide open. No, 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 you've got to step in and tell him he's not doing the right thing. I said, well, he's created space we have having to do. It was a very long week that they won't have it. Anyway, Hurst makes his run, 
stops his run, which creates the space for himself. And uh, nice finish, he celebrates. I don't think he went over the top. One or two people going crackers. Bah, bah. He scored a goal at a packed Hillsborough. You would celebrate, wouldn't you? I'd celebrate, you know. I don't think he went over the top. You know, he weren't running around getting wanker sign or what he. So, uh, Wednesday a goal down. Like I said, I think the occasion would just probably get into us a little bit. But I've got, after that first, no, not even ten minutes, seven or eight minutes, suddenly it starts coming together. The crowd didn't get weighed down with it. The crowd was still buoyant and that sort of infused into the lads. And after that, it were really, it were wave after wave of attack. It's, in many ways, one of the best performances at season. I love the equaliser on so many levels. It's good old up from Gregory to start with. He puts it out to Johnson. We've talked about this nearly every week. He doesn't just charge off with ball. He's always got that head up and he'll, he'll go quick and he'll go slow and he'll change his run. Gregory gets in front of Man on near post. It's a nice zip low ball in. That's the other thing we talked about with Johnson. He varies his crosses. He's always got a different cross available. Nice zip ball in. Opens his body. Puts it in far side. But there's even something else I like about that goal, which is just before that. It's a proper, great crossover play from Gregory and Berahino. Before the, before the ball goes in, you know, he goes out to Johnson, and while it's out there, you're watching him wait for cross. But if just look in middle, just as, as Johnson's advancing with ball. Gregory and Berahino, lovely crossover run, defenders a little bit like that. He steals a yard, it's fantastic movement, and that is, we've talked all season about strike partnerships aren't always just about picking your best two players. What do they bring to each other? Do they work together? And that's a that's just a lovely little crossover. And it's very basic, but it's amazing how many times you see teams at, at every level. But Christ, look at England for a 10-year window. You don't see these basic things applied a lot of the time. Great understanding, crossover, full defence, and it, it's a fantastic finish. And once Wednesday got that equaliser, you have got no doubt with the waves of attack that were coming that we get that second. Wednesday enjoying themselves, that's the thing. The, the crowd are in a buoyant mood, the players are in a buoyant mood, and it, it lifts that confidence. You can see players, you can see shoulders filling out. And George Byers, he's just strutting about in there. You, you know, he... Straight about like Jan Mulby in his pump, but about three and a half stone lighter. Just knocking ball about, get a bit of shoulder turning, little passes, big passes, always got head up, always looking. Luan goes in there winning tackles. It just it's just fantastic midfield display from, from all three of them. Then Luongo, Bannon and Byers, but I thought Byers especially was superb, just the way he moved the ball, the way he kept drifting and kept drifting at just inside the wing backs and always giving that option for one two and give and go and we, we really caused them a lot of problems i thought he were fantastic buyers um and then we take the lead and it's a it's a better you know goal it it looks because it's a big crowd scene in there it looks a bit of a scrappy goal but it's fantastic forward play because as it bobbles down to him, there's about three players in there, in and around him, including one of his own teammates. I think it might be Gregory. As it comes down, there's an option to hit it first time. but And he's looking down at the ball, but you can see his head like that. He sees his man there, so he does, he does that little half step. He does that little feint. Player makes his move. He nudges and then just puts it across. It, it's almost like he's waiting for players to get out of the way. It's fantastic. And that's that's that calmness in the box that you can't really buy. Do you know what I mean? People have got that or they ain't got that. You can have great technique and everything else, but that awareness in the box of fractions of seconds here and there, that what that is a difference that makes a quality striker. And that, like I said, from a distance, oh, it's a bit of a melee box and he's managed to get in. When you look right in there, that is a really, really clever goal. That little feint, buys a second, moves somebody half a, half a foot out of the way, puts it in. Fantastic goal. And Wednesday in cruise control, really, at this stage. Gregory is like a man on fire, isn't he? He's a man on fire at minute. He's scoring all these goals. There was a, a raking ball from Bannon. He cuts inside. He sort of just advanced it right back position, actually. I'm not sure what he's doing back there, but he puts it over top. Gregory takes it on chest. And fires in a shot. The angle don't favour him. 
But it, that is confidence. That is the confidence of somebody on a, on a fantastic run. And it's just at the right time. To take that on, as it comes of it, chest. It's a right save from their keeper, actually, by the way. What's his name? Bazuno. He made about four or five excellent saves. I was really impressed with him. Uh, I've not really heard of him. Uh, I might look him up and see see what he's all about. But fantastic save. But that confidence from Gregory to take that on chest and hit that volley. Wednesday, absolutely full of beans. As you made another really good save in from Bannon. There was some great link play from Better here. You know, he dropped in back to goal. Play a little one two with Johnson. And then when he got it, Palmer were on the move. And he rather than give him the ball to to engine onto, he just put it through a, a gap, a square pass through a gap. And Palmer just aired onto it. And that vision. We always talk about that thing is when you're playing at a tempo like that, one of the best ways to keep the tempo going is not to play the ball to feet. It's to play it into the space in front. I'm not on, not long ball, I'm not about long ball, but a little ball sideways on like that and someone can steam onto it. So Palmer steams on. He's had a very good game, by the way, and he's got his critics every bloody week. God knows why. I don't know what folks are expecting. Excellent game, I thought Palmer's had. Drove on, cut back inside, showed a calmness you don't usually expect from defenders in box. Waited, cut it back, and Bannon curls one in. And again, as I said, that Bizzuno, it's another terrific save. All of a, as a contest just before break, corner in, in front of the south stand. Bannon whips in, gets headed out quite well by their lad, to be fair to him. One plays a little ball down to its corner flag, and George Bayers just gets ball. He's just had a fantastic afternoon. Little Ronaldinho shimmy over there with a little inside, drills it in, and Stody's still up there from original set piece and just turns it home, and genuinely, that's game over. That's game over at that stage. Fantastic goal Wednesday from a goal down. Eds could have dropped, occasion could have got to him, but no, they come back, they powered on, 3 1, and it, it, it's genuinely game over. Second half, Wednesday, do what they haven't done a, a lot of times this season. It's just game management. They don't go mad. They don't go mad. Obviously, Johnson aren't still pushing on, we're still trying to make things tick in midfield, we're still moving the ball around really well, but they don't go crackers with it. It's just they controlling they controlling the play really. They have a couple of attacks. The, the lad comes on down left hand side for them. Uh, cuts inside, gets across in there. Lads made a run round between front at centre half and clips one on edge at post. But really, I thought there were few and far between them opportunities. Erst were linking it quite nicely at times, but I, I didn't feel Wednesday would on any really unnecessary pressure. They weren't really trying to put a squeeze on us, which uh, that's been the story of a lot of teams this season, hasn't it? They've, they've sat off a bit and, and let us have ball. 3-1 down, I thought that would have been surprising. The game really could have been put to bed. We got a little free kick when one of them did close down at round, so a little free kick, I think, with Hutchinson and Palmer. And honestly, Hutchinson stood with ball for about 20 seconds. It doesn't sound a lot, but in scheme of a football match, that's a long time. Just stood there. Nobody goes to engage him at all. He's just like looking, and then he sees Gregory, and he thinks, all right, so he just pings one. Gregory takes it down, fantastic first touch. Mentioned it earlier, that confidence. Lob comes back off bar. I mean, it would have been a wonderful goal. In fact, I tell you what, it would have been one of them great goals where he scored down and turned around to Gafford and said, right, I've won game now. Let me have a sit down and a swig of Lucas here. Do you know what I mean? It would have been one of them lovely, great strike, great confidence. See, I like them sort of chances. There's a lot of, oh, a long ball. I don't know. Difference between long ball and long pass, isn't it? I mean, it's not an aimless hoof. He spotted him and thought, well, I can get him. Bang. One touch. Lob. I love that. For all for all nice football in the world, I just get excited when it gets at our centre-forward's feet anyway in the opposition box. I mean, that's a bit old-fashioned, but so I am. That would have been great. Wednesday set the fourth gas a little bit, but they've got no need to go charging about. You know what I mean? There was a secure result from MK Dons, meant we knew we were there. So they set the fourth gas a little bit. They get an opportunity. Erst does a, a really nice turn. That's one thing I did notice with him. It did remind me of somebody. Uh, that little gap between defenders. I know we're playing with a back three, not a back four, but the thing about a back four, that little gap between centre half and full back. You can almost extend it same way back three. That little gap in between, that half turn, that quick half turn and shot. He just, yeah, he did one of them. Good save, Peacock Farrell. 
Um, and I'm actually, Peacock Farrell made an, it was an outstanding save from an header. It really were a fantastic save. And I've, that's what I do like about him. I've said it, I think I said it in the last game, I think there was a similar issue, is that when you're on top, when you're dominating a team, that's when it's hardest to be a goalkeeper. You know, when you sat there counting daisies, that's when you've actually got to be your most switched on for call to actions. So I thought Peacock Farrell had a, a good game, even though over the 90, there weren't that much for him to particularly do. But when he were called on, I thought he were sharp and reactive. I thought he was really good. Panic stations when Baz goes down. No! Now, I've got to be honest. I'm not just saying this. I would have had Baz off earlier. Because that's just who I am. I'm a, a, a worrying Yorkshireman. So, I'd have been like, right, game is results in bag. You know, I mean, he'd have kicked off about coming off, no doubt about that. Games it bag, result at MK, we know what's happening. Your best player and your centre forward, I'd have probably had them two off 20 minutes earlier. But but that's just me, you know. And even even playing Sunday league, I used to do it. Subbing strikers off when they, when they were on an hat trick. Come off, son, saving you for cup next week. Oh, you fat bastard. Don't worry about it, mate. Saving you for next week. You fat fucking Jim, I hate you. Oh, take a seat, son, put a jacket on. That's just how I am. Bit of a worrier. So I'd have probably had him off, but everyone's different, aren't they? And Bannon, let's be honest, he's played nearly every game of the season. He's probably one of the fittest players on Park, you know. I, th I think what's probably done him is that lunatic 75, 80 yard sprint that he does. You know, talk about buoyancy. But when you're on top of things, you're winning a game, good atmosphere in ground, but you're full of beans, that sort of thing you can do, so... Uh, but anyway, Darren Moore did bring him off, made a couple of changes. Patterson had a great shot, absolutely great shot, really got his foot round it. Another good save from their lad, whose name I must start pronouncing correctly because I keep saying Bizuno. I think it's Bazuno. Anyway, the goalkeeper, uh, another great save from him, really impressed with him from their lads. Uh, but game management Wednesday saw the game out and then right at the end. Bit of icing, bit of a cherry on top of cake. George Byers. Great got I love glancing headers. Not, if I love any headers, I'm going to be honest with you. It'll be outlawed, I'm sure, before I'm dead in bed. But lovely ball. Boom. Glance right across keep to the far side. I mean, that's what we used to tell you when you were a kid, weren't it? And it ready to the corner. Fantastic. 4-1. Wednesday completely home and dry. Buoyant atmosphere, in ground, and everybody celebrating together. Man at match. I thought there's so many good performances. Thought keeper were really good when called on because, like I said, that's hardest thing to be sharp when you've not had that much to do. I thought it were all good. I thought Palmer were excellent. I know some people's blaming him for first goal and oh. Ball watching. I wouldn't particularly say we're ball watching. I, I, like I said, I think that's natural instinct to put your semi between ball and goal, but it's slightly different. Other than that, I thought he was fantastic. But then I thought he were last week against Fleetwood. If, if you look back at that Fleetwood game, Peacock Faddle were looking to set him away so many times. I think he's been a, uh, not undervalued by the manager and his teammates, but I think a bit undervalued by Wednesday fans this season. I thought he had a terrific game. Gregory. Fantastic. Just coming into form at the right time of the season. He looks absolutely full of sharpness, full of beans, taking things out. Like I said, that, that chest and volley in first half, that take down and lob from, from Hutchinson pass, you only attempt them things from those sort of angles, those sort of distances, when you're full of confidence. And he is at minute. Um, and you know what? I like the fact he's a Sheffield lad. I don't know why. It gives, it gives me that connection. Yeah, I know he's one of them, but... They're us, aren't they? We're Sheffielders. I, I like the fact we've got a Sheffield lad leading line. I don't know why, but for, for some reason, it means more to me. It does. I, you know, not xenophobic, I don't like that, but I just like the fact we've got a Sheffield lad leading line. And a brilliant. Um, I got in yesterday, and then I was just checking on that, and there was just one fantastic photo, but I can't remember when I saw it. And it's just a rammed cop. And just Gregory walking across front of it, just looking up at it, and it just with number nine on the back of his shirt, 
fantastic and brilliant. Sheffield had all them Wednesday fans in it, brilliant. Yeah, thought he was fantastic. Bannon his usual sin. But George Byers. Like that, the early games I saw him this season, I was a little bit critical. I thought he was a bit milky. And uh, I know he'd, he'd not played a lot of football. And then he had that injury. But after he come back from that, I didn't think it took him long to get going at all. And he's really... His quality on ball, he's calm, he's assured. And I'll tell you something else. I like his saluting goal celebration. I do. That shouldn't be a reason to like a player. Not when you get to my age. Maybe if you were 10, I'd be like, Dad, I like the way he always does that when he celebrates. He'd be like, yeah, great son, yeah. You know, idiot. At my age, that shouldn't be something that I see and go, yeah, and put a big daft grin on my face. But it does. I rate like his saluting celebration. Not as much as I like the way he moves the ball. Just so intelligent. He's always available. And he's got that vital thing, which we'll probably need in playoffs, maybe, because I think there'll be tight games. That ability to arrive in box. Love it. Probably, I think he's the only one who's really... Baz has scored some goals this season, but I think Bayer's doing that is probably the first time since Kieran Lee was in his last full fit season. I think it's, he's the first player since then who's really done that on a regular basis. And uh, Apparently he wasn't a regular goal scorer at Swansea or whatever, but uh, he's really... I thought he was fantastic. So yeah, love Gregory. Fantastic, proper centre-forwards performance. Brimming with confidence. And he's a Sheffield lad. Liam Palmer, I thought, were excellent as well. But I, I would just... Edgy, I'd just give it to George Bears. Not just because he was excellent all afternoon, but he's capped it off with it ahead of goal, and I love Edders. But also that little bit of footwork when he set Story's goal up, that little Ronaldinho double shoulder drop. So, yeah, George Bears, man at match. God, what a season it's been. I mean, it's done now for, for most of the teams, apart from us in playoffs, but top of that table, right to last day. Unbelievable. I feel a bit for Plymouth. I saw results coming in, and I've got to be honest, I do feel a bit for Plymouth because they've been there and there about the all season. They lose the manager halfway through. They, they had a bit of a wobble. Then they come back. They're still up there. They've been there and there about the all year, and they've just got a horrific running. And that's that's sometimes just where it look, the way cards are stacked in it. So I feel a bit for Plymouth fans. But uh, Wednesday, I didn't there. That's all that matters.